In today's era of giants, and a few notable giant slayers, there's been a debate about how much size and height matters at the highest level of heavyweight. And that has me thinking a lot about Joe Lewis. Lewis, at 6'1", destroyed a number of talented men as big or bigger than today's largest heavyweights. This included ex-champ Primo Carnera, who was 6'7", and weighed in at 270, lean. But Lewis also fought perhaps the shortest and maybe strangest heavyweight contender of all time. That man was two-ton Galento, and his fight with Lewis may help shed some light on the future of the heavyweight division, while helping to highlight the best styles and tactics for both shorter and taller boxers. If nothing else, it makes for one hell of a bizarre and entertaining story. Galento claimed he was 5'9", but was very obviously lying. Despite his small stature, he KO'd a number of gigantic opponents, many times while punching straight upwards. In fact, he was coming into his fight with Lewis having KO'd eight heavyweights in a row. He was not only obese, but muscular, widely known as the beer barrel that walked like a man. Even more surprising, he had never been knocked down, and once went into a fight having just received 17 stitches in his head that same day. Also, he had once fought a bear, a kangaroo, and a dead octopus. But that's besides the point. As far as Galento could be said to have a style, it mostly consisted of fouls. He was a notoriously dirty fighter, wrapping his arm around an opponent's neck and hitting whatever vulnerables he could get at while in the clinch. However, he could use the boxer's crouch skillfully enough, not only to stay safe, but also to load up his punches with more power. Basically, Glento's style was similar to Rocky Marciano's if Marciano was horribly drunk. In complete contrast, Joe Lewis was one of the most technically proficient fighters ever seen. He was careful and measured, waiting for the right moment to unload one of his terrifying hooks or uppercuts. But Lewis was most well known for the cross, a punch he performed so well, I've already done an entire video on the mechanics of it. Obviously, no one expected Lewis to let Galento get past the first round. But in actuality, Lewis, usually very kind and always a gentleman, was planning on carrying Galento so that he could inflict as much damage to him as possible. This was all due to Galento's notorious trash talking. Throughout training, Lewis was heard to mutter quietly to himself, why that little fat man have to call me a bum? Lewis was also put off by Galento constantly calling him at his house to mention that he was going to moida him before quickly hanging up. Finally the night came, and Lewis had his chance to exact his revenge. But then, Galento surprised Lewis and everyone else. As Lewis tried to measure distance with his jab, Glento faded back or ducked just out of reach, prompting Lewis to overreach. Then, seemingly defying the laws of physics, the obese fighter sprung forward and caught Lewis with a tremendous gazelle hook. Lewis tried to counter with a check hook, but he was too late. The champion stumbled back, but kept his feet. It was starting to dawn on him that this fight might not be as easy as he had at first thought. But this time, Lewis's hook connected, stalling two tons momentum and putting Lewis back into the fight. Galento kept coming forward with shifting overhands and leaping hooks from the crouch. All great tools for the shorter man in the fight. However, he failed to land anything of significance for the rest of the round. To those watching, it seemed that perhaps Lewis was simply caught off guard by the sheer audacity of Galento's attack. Or maybe he was thrown off by Galento's body odor as a man usually refrained from showering for weeks before a fight in order to disturb his opponent. Lewis performed as expected in round two. He took advantage of Galento's aggression with well-timed counters and landed a beautiful uppercut cross combination off the backhand. Uppercuts are a great tool for the taller fighter, and although Lewis's missed, it did its job, 
coercing Tutus to straighten up out of his crouch. Later on in the round, Lewis sent Galento tumbling to the canvas with a hook cross combination, stepping into his cross to add even more power, then sidestepping right to make space for his hook. It seemed the fight would soon be over. But then in the third, Galento proved the first had not been a fluke after all. After successfully slipping Lewis's jabs to land a few hard shots, Galento hit home hard enough to knock the great Joe Lewis to the canvas. To his credit, Galento set up the shot skillfully, slipping an uppercut to intercept with a hard lead hook. So now we pause briefly, we come to the question, how did perhaps the shortest man to ever fight for the heavyweight title knock down the legendary Joe Lewis in his prime? And the answer is that weight often matters more than height, which is why we have weight classes rather than height classes. But this holds especially true at heavyweight. Put simply, once you carry a certain amount of weight, you have the potential to do enough damage to knock down 99.9% .9 of humans on the planet, no matter how much taller they are than you. Put complicatedly, mass times acceleration equals force. This is the reason that Galento, who actually weighed 30 pounds more than Lewis, could knock him down, and why Lewis himself could topple so many giants. They had enough mass to create the potential to do so, but there are a lot of important caveats to this that we'll get to in a moment. For now, let's get back to the fight. Lewis got up hungry for revenge, but took another hard left hook. Adding insult to injury, Galento fouled Lewis each time he corralled him to the ropes. Lewis later admitted he had lost his cool after the knockdown and had not stuck to his game plan. But in the fourth and final round, Lewis got back on track. He ran Galento into counters, fainted his way in, and set up power punches off of his jabs. Galento was tough as nails, but no one could take that many punches from Joe Lewis and stay standing. The ref waved it off, and two tons finally dropped. So even though height doesn't matter as much at heavyweight, height still usually means longer reach, plus the ability to put on more muscle. And true, there were always giants around, but they were usually too slow, gassed too easily, or were simply not born with natural boxing skills. As the increasing world population ensures more giants are born, there will always only be so many top spots. So my prediction is that we'll see a lot more giants dominating heavyweight in the future. But at the same time, I do think there will still be some future champions the height of Usyk, Ruiz, or even Tyson's height, for the sheer reason that they're still very capable of either landing knockouts, damaging opponents enough to get a TKO feeling that, or simply gassing them out. But I'm curious what you think, so let me know in the comments. I got a lot of this footage from the channel Boxing's Greatest Fighters in Color, and you could check out the full fight there along with a bunch of other classics in color for the first time ever. From the Modern Martial Artist, this has been David Christian, wishing you happy training.